book haul. I've been out of the books uh, for the book haul. Stimulus checks just went out. Mostly we had to spend it on bills and put some in savings, but we got some book money. I went a little nuts. <laughs> Most of these are going to be horror. This one decidedly is not. Uh, botanical folklore of Britain and Ireland. <laughs> got it for research for a book I'm working on, but also it sounds interesting. So, excited for that. Ah! <laughs> you scratched me. Little jerk, I love you. They say you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but sometimes I just buy a book because I like the cover. This is one of those times. It's pr it'll probably still be fun, but I love the cover. It's my best friend's exorcism, which is got a cover like a VHS tape. In fact, <laughs> the uh, the back of it, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got like some dirt stains that I was like 99% sure was intentional as part of the, it's like, oh, well, it's a, you know, dirty, busted up old VHS case. But, that little, that little tiny bit of me that wasn't sure is like, was trying to wipe it off, like, make sure that there wasn't actually something gross on there that I was going to ignore because I thought it was part of the book. So pretty. Tell me it's not pretty. Tell me it doesn't make you want to go watch your old VHS tapes. Provided you have a working VCR. And even if you don't, you might still want to. Okay, um... This book packs all the magic of a summer horror flick. I'll be honest, I know next to nothing about it, I just like the cover. But we're gonna find out together what it's about. High school sophomores Abby and Gretchen have been best friends since fourth grade, but after an evening of skinny dipping gone disas goes disastrously wrong, Gretchen begins to act... different. She's moody, she's irritable, and bizarre incidents keep happening whenever she's nearby. Abby's investigations leads her to some startling discoveries, and by the time their story reaches its terrible conclusion, the fate of Abby and Gretchen will be determined by a single question. Is their friendship powerful enough to beat the devil? Uh, no. <laughs> Kidding, sorry. Um, like an unholy hybrid of Beaches and The Exorcist, my best friend's exorcism blends teen angst, adolescent drama, unspeakable horrors, and a mix of 80s pop songs into a pulse-pounding supernatural thriller. Doesn't that sound great? <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'll have to let you know it's any good when I get around to it. I, my problem is, is that I buy books faster than I can read them, and I kind of really need to cut it out because I did the math the other day and I was like, ooh, can't be buying too many more books because uh, it's just going to take me a long time, a long time to read what I already have. Next up, uh, and it's another book that I bought. Okay. Uh, there's another book haul the other day, or maybe the same day, I don't know if I'm uploading these the same day, I've recorded it like five minutes ago, but that had this book, Horror Store by Grady Hendrix, and it's like set in like, like it, basically the equivalent of like an Ikea. And I bought that book, in part because the description sounded, made it sound like really, it was really fun and funny, but also because I liked the cover, and then when I found out the interior was... Kind of like the catalog, I got really, really excited. So that, incidentally, was not a book that I technically bought because I liked the design of it. But I was super excited <laughs> to find out what. Like, if the premise hadn't been enough to catch me, I would have been like, no, I'm gonna buy it because there's like some catalog page looking stuff on the inside. Um, but it's the same author, which I didn't know at the time that I bought any of these. It's gonna show you that I care too much about covers and not enough about who writes and <laughs> but but this one is also by the same author as is the next one up which is another book that I bought just because I was like that looks cool so and that is we sold our souls that's what it's called right yeah um because it looks like a magazine cover uh this is another one that I don't know anything about it other than it's like metal music and I think it's for only a girl with a guitar can save us all. Oh, that's just the... <laughs> I think I thought that was the first sentence of the description. Okay, sorry. Every morning, uh, Chris Pulaski wakes up in hell. In the 1990s, she was a lead guitarist of Dirk Work, a heavy metal band on the brink of breakout success until leader, lead singer Terry Hunt embarked on a solo career and rocketed to stardom, leaving his bandmates to rot in obscurity. What a jerk. <laughs> um, now Chris works as night manager of a Best Western, 
She's tired, broke, and unhappy. Then one day, everything changes. A shocking act of violence turns her life upside down, and she begins to suspect that Terry sabotaged more than just the band. Chris hits the road, hoping to reunite with Dirk Work. Sorry, hoping to reunite Dirk Work. Uh, really hope that's how you pronounce that. It's, good. it's the U with the little dots. Two dots on the top. So probably mispronouncing it. Uh, to re She's hoping to reunite Dirk Work and confront the man who ruined her life. Her journey will take her from the Pennsylvania Rust Belt to a celebrity rehab center to a satanic music festival, a furious power ballad about never giving up, We Sold Our Souls, is an epic journey into the heart of a conspiracy-crazed, pill-popping, paranoid country that seems to have lost its very soul. Yeah. I... In fact, if I had read the description, I might have actually been even... I would have been like, actually, that does sound fun. But I literally bought it for the cover, but now I'm... Having read the description, I'm even more excited to check it out, so... Um... I had coffee before I made this video. <laughs> Up next, uh, it's actually not horror as well, and it's a little damp because my packages, two of them showed up wet. I'm bad, bad delivery driver. <laughs> oh, so cringy, why did I say that? It's been raining, so I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's just rain. Uh, but cat pictures, please, and other stories. Uh, sci-fi, so far as I know, sci-fi and fantasy or just sci-fi, I don't know. Um, no, well, sci-fi and fantasy. Uh, I guess, well, I guess we'll read the back. I'm always ambivalent about reading the back of short story collections, because I don't oh, I don't particularly like knowing what's going to happen in the stories before I get there. I'm like, it's going to be 5,000 words. I don't want to know anything. I just want someone to tell me it's a good book, and I'll read it. Um, but acclaimed writer Naomi uh, Kritzer's marvelous tales of science fiction and fantasy are collected in cat pictures, please, and other stories. Here are 17 short stories, including our Hugo Award-winning story, Cat Pictures, Please, which is about what happens if artificial intelligence was born out of a search engine history. Two stories are previously unpublished. Kritzger is a gift for telling tales. Both humorous and tender stories are filled with both wit and intelligence and require thoughtful reading. I drank a cup of coffee before I did this video. Can you tell? Anyway. <laughs> um, I've, I've really... This is another one that the cover kind of had me, but that's... Honestly, short story collections, like I said, I don't read the back of anyway, so... Yeah, honestly, uh, short story collections, it's... I, for me, it's always about the cover, or the reviews, or both. This one, I'm good both, so yay! Excited to check it out. This was one that I don't remember anything about, but I think it was recommended to me in, um... What's it called? Was it Book Riot? I don't know, but I get some horror newsletter, like, once a week. Uh, and this was one of the books that was recommended on their thing, I think, I hope. I'm not make. I hope I'm not making that up. Um, The Bows Withered. Uh, when I told them my- oh. The Bows Withered when I told them my dreams. I never actually read the subtitle. My brain thought it was the author's name, which makes no sense, because the author's name is down here. Um, it was also just a tiny picture that I looked at on Amazon, to be clear. I'm just now, like, properly looking at it. The debut collection from accomplished Irish author Maura McHugh, qu uh, containing 20 stories, four of them original to this volume, oh, that's good, uh, which represents the best strange visions from an award-winning writer of fiction, non-fiction, comic books, and plays. In her beautifully observed evocative stories, Maura McHugh explores her love of the uncanny, delves into the eerie past, and evokes weird landscapes that might just coexist with our own. I'm a sucker for... for... Uh... <laughs> I still know nothing about it, and after that it's just quotes. In a way, I kind of like that they didn't say what any of the stories were about, but specifically the words uncanny, eerie, and weird, you put those all in the description on the back of the book, and I'm just, and I'm just gonna buy it. <laughs> I just, well, unless you also include words like grotesque, uh, bloody, um, disturbing, because I'm like, ah, I'm not, a, I'm not a big splatter splatterpunk, um, horror person, but, yeah, I like Eerie, really like Eerie, um, there it is, one more time, moving on, this one is also wet, also came in a wet package, Thin Places by K. Cross, Cronister, I like the cover of that, it's just, kinda, 
vaguely, it's the sort of thing that you're like, I hope that wouldn't be a picture hanging on the wall in my hotel room, sort of thing. <laughs> the first woman to live in the four-gabled house fermented her unborn children in the wine cellar. <laughs> when they came to term, she broke them- whoa, when- ah, I wasn't expecting it to go from there. I thought it was just gonna be that she just- like, I- I don't know. I thought she was, like, inducing labor really early, taking the, like, dead babies and fermenting them in the wine cellar. Messed up. But yeah. I wasn't expecting the possibility of them still being alive, which I don't know yet, actually. I have to keep reading. But... <laughs> the, the fermented or unborn children in the wine cellar. When they came to term, she broke them open on the floorboards. Her hardiest son weighed half an ounce at birth. His face curved to the shape of the mason jar womb where he developed, stayed pink for an hour before he died in a puddle from a held eye in an afterbirth. <laughs> okay, so the kid's dead. Ah. The second woman to live in the four-gabled house pulled her children from the ground like stubborn roots. They came out of the soil smelling of pollen with faces like tulips. They were healthy until she cut their stems and then they withered. They returned reedy and gray-faced to the earth. The third woman in the four-gabled house said she had no children. The fourth woman... In the four-gabled house built her children from the parts of old radios and tractors. Their cries sounded like the spinning of propellers. Some of them could blink and one could even smile, but breast milk fried their motors. In their mother's arms, they dissolved into heaps of cracking, crackle, crackling wires. <laughs> okay, I didn't know any of that uh, when I bought it. It, do it doesn't, like, turn me off of reading it, but... I just read a little description. This was also recommended on the Book Riot horror uh, email. But yeah, I was told it was really eerie, and again, I fall for the word eerie, so I bought it. I liked the cover. I'm interested in checking it out. Um, still a little damp, a little cold to the touch. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'll read one of the wet ones tonight so they'll be extra scary because they're wet and cold. <laughs> Next up, A Nest of Nightmares by Lisa Tuttle, which was apparently mentioned in Paperbacks from Hell, which I haven't bought yet because it's like $22, uh, but it's Grady Hendrix wrote it as well. Not this, but Paperbacks from Hell book, but this one's mentioned in that book. Um, I like the cover, and it's, well, yeah, well it's been sitting in my like little save for later section uh, of the cart on Amazon for like a few months now. Um, and I bought in other books at different times instead of this one, because this one was like $17. <laughs> yeah, $17. Um, and I'm like, oh, do I want to spend $17 on a single collection when I can get one for like $10 or $12 or $14? But um, I'll probably enjoy the book. I was a wee bit disappointed though, because I'm such a, a tight lot on flipping money that, you know, I, I just opened up the package along with the next book that is so much bigger behind it. Um, they were in the package together and I was like, $17 for this skinny little thing. But, <laughs> prices aside, um, I'm sorry, this is just this is just a video of me admitting personal failings. Um, but 13 stories guaranteed to leave you strongly disquieted, Neil Gaiman, so... I think I'll probably like it. Um, and I like- I love the cover. I wish I had paid less for it, but... The, problem, the thing is, eventually I don't remember how much I paid for books, and I'll just- it'll be on my shelf and I'll be like, I like that book. So, I'll get to that point. I'm just- a petty little jerk right now. Um, but no, that said, I'm happy that the Valancourt is, is bringing some of these books back into circulation, so I shouldn't complain. I'm sorry, Valancourt. I just don't like to pay 18, 17, was it 17 or 18? Too much for, for a book this size. Um, in Lisa Tuttle's stories, the everyday domestic world of her female protagonist is invaded by the bizarre, the uncanny, the horrific. In Bug House, a woman goes to visit her aunt and is shocked to find- I don't want to read- I'm sorry. I won't, I won't read it for you because I don't want to know what the stories are about. I'm sorry, 
but it's, it'll be fun. You just go read it on Amazon. It'll probably be good. Neil Gaiman liked it. So, yeah. Cover's great. <laughs> Maybe buy it used. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Next up is Collision by J.S. Brugler. And the little blurb from Stephen Graham and Jones. So I want to check out some of his stuff. Um, but... It says, a range from horror to fantasy to literary to science fiction and every emotional rationale in between. Um, anyway, I'm sure it compliments it. I didn't read the rest of the description, but it tells me that not all the stories are horror. But I'm okay with that. A collection of 12 of the, per I'm not going to mess up their name again, darkest, finest stories with four new works, including the Uncanny. See? There's one Uncanny. I'm going to like it. Or, well, I'm gonna buy it if I had read the back at all and saw the word uncanny, I'd have bought it. Aside from the fact that I already bought it. Um, the uncanny novella, Ripples of a Blank Shore, Relish the Gothic Strangeness of Union Falls, The Alien Horror of Rogues Bay 3013, The, har the Heartbreaking, I Can Talk, the Heartbreaking Dystopia of Glow, The Weird Mythos of Avarun, and others. Introduction by award winning author Angela Slatter. It is clear. Brokolar is a new and powerful voice in fantastical fiction. Now I see the word dread in one of the little blurbs. That's another word you'll get me with is dread. Um, I like dread. That's why I bought all this stuff. <laughs> we have, this is one I've been eyeing for a while as well, so hopefully I'll read it and enjoy it. And hopefully I read all these books and enjoy them and they don't disappoint me. Yay! Okay, next up. Uh, another book I just bought because of the cover, and that is Horrorama, C.V. Hunt's Horrorama by C.V. Hunt and A.S. Coomer. Wait, C.V. Hunt actually didn't write any of these books. <laughs> I don't know who C.V. Hunt is. I'm sorry. Three novelettes. Okay, their names are right here as well. Uh, A.S. Coomer, Lucas Mang Mangum, if I can talk, and Matt Harvey. Um... And again, something I bought because it looked like a cassette. And it's worth noting, I like continued to use cassette tapes and record things on cassette tapes up through like 2011. It's got the little. Oh, just, I love the little details. I'm also. <laughs> I'm just really partial to cassette tapes. I like continued to record things on cassette, on VHS, um, up until like 2011. So, it's a big part of my childhood, but also my adolescence and that as well. Um, everybody moved on to DVDs by then, but I was like, I want every episode of Full Metal Alchemist. I'm pretty sure this book, just to give a quick shout out to where I, I saw, I heard about it, was on uh, Cameron Chaney's channel, which if, if you're watching me, you almost certainly already know about the guy, but if you don't, go check his stuff out. He's got a great horror library and he's just... I really like his videos. Um, ready for the book version of a, a horror movie marathon? Horrorama brings you three tales reminiscent of those popcorn-fueled all-nighters. Store all self-storage by A.S. Coomer. Richard Dennison has landed a new job as a night security officer. His bosses are a bit strange, but not as bizarre as the renters who visit their units at night. And the only instructions he's been given are to call the police. Primitive by Lucas Mangum. Old friends spend the weekend camping on Moon Mountain, only to have their vacation interrupted when a disheveled woman appears from the woods. She tells them she's looking for her son, but the group finds her story hard to believe. Will she find her son, and will they all make it off the mountain alive? The Vessel by Matt Harvey. A cult, heralds of celestial ascendancy, is hellbent on reviving their dark god. All they need is a body for their master to inhabit. When, uh, Elise? Elise? I'm bad at names. I'll show you in a second. Uh, <laughs> Elise Abington wakes in the middle of the night to find herself feeling strange. Little does she know she's on a crash course with the cult and a deprogrammer willing to do anything to stop the cult's cause. Okay, there's the name. Anyway, mostly I just bought it for the cover. <laughs> but but those, that doesn't sound like bad, uh, you know, descriptions for... Obviously it's meant to be... Not to tell you everything, so you're actually like, oh, that, I want to go read that. So, yeah, um, I've heard 
the Grindhouse Press, uh, they put out some more kind of splattery books, so... Well, actually, well, well, it'll be interesting to see how I actually feel about it uh, when I read it. But I, I, I've got a somewhat, I have a decent-ish toleration for violence, but there, there's a, definitely a point at which where I'm like, this it's not my cup of tea. I, t I, I like stories in spite of people losing limbs, not because of. <laughs> Next up is uh, Full Throttle by Joe Hill. And, and see, just going back to how much of a tightwad I am, <laughs> about how cheap I am, this, this hardcover paid $13 for it, for less than that little tiny book. Earlier, would uh, I'll shut up about it. I'm sorry. But it's a collection of stories, and he wrote, I believe, a couple of them. That he co-wrote with his dad, Stephen King. But yeah, I like the interior design of the book, which I didn't show you. Yeah, I'm not gonna read you the <laughs> description because it goes into what the individual stories are about. But if you like Joe Hill, check it out. If you like Stephen King, check it out. And for that matter, Joe Hill's kind of... Like, I don't want to say his work is his dad's work, but I'm saying there's a similarity enough that if you like Stephen King, you should check out Joe Hill. Uh, he also doesn't have, like, 60 novels out, so you could very quickly catch up. Um, so I, I haven't gone majorly out of my way to collect Joe Hill's stuff, and even then, I own quite a bit of his back catalog, so... Easy... Easy guy, easy collection to complete, all things considered, so. Check it out. My battery's dying. Gotta go. Bye bye